Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney. Today I've got a uh, module plans video for you basically. So if you had watched my Zinx fabric haul, when was that? Last week, the week before? <laughs> I'll pop a, a card up to that video up here. Um, you know that I recently went on kind of a little bit of a fabric shopping spree. Um, it was the first time I'd shop for fabric in person since before COVID, <laughs> pre-COVID, is that going to be how we delineate time from now on? Who knows? Um, anyway, and I got a lot of really good finds, all, mostly, not all, I think I bought myself three or four pieces, but um, for my daughter, for her back to school wardrobe, she has requested a uh, pretty much mostly mom-made wardrobe, which I'm very excited about, and um, we've been having fun starting to plan some things out. Now, when it's me, I can very easily sit down and plan out, you know, a three module wardrobe. Um, if you're unsure what a module is, I have an entire playlist on my channel um, under playlists, but it's an entire list all about modules. Um, so you can definitely read more about that. But basically it is a topper topper, like a cardigan, jacket, blazer, something along those lines. Um, two bottoms, you know, skirt, shorts, pants, whatever, and then three tops makes up a module. And then the idea, um, you know, they all go together and then when you mo add multiple modules together, you can get a ridiculous amount of outfits with just 18 pieces of clothing, if you're doing three modules, for instance. Which I think, we're going to be going off that formula just a little bit because she is um, and going into eighth grade. So that is middle school. And, um, you know, style is a little safer. You know, in middle school, kids are trying to figure out what style is and what that means. I mean, she wears leggings or jeans 95% of the time. <laughs> So, you know, like, that was pretty much go with everything. Um, we're going to be st sticking with very neutral colors, but I think she does want to have a lot more fun with some tops, and um, even there's a jacket, for instance, in this one that I'm going to be making for her as well. So it's not going to be as diverse, maybe. I think the tops will, but the bottoms won't be, like, as diverse as some if I were making something for myself, which is fine. I thought this might be a nice little um, breakaway from what we normally see with my modules, a uh, different body, different age, all that kind of thing. Um, also, uh, my closet is just getting full. <laughs> it's getting just to a really good point. So I thought it was a perfect time to kind of switch gears and sew for her for a little bit. Okay, the other thing, getting her to stand and model for any length of time is nearly impossible. So I thought we would just break this down module by module. Um, you know, so we'll do, a, I'll do a complete module one, we'll show it on her, uh, then we'll do module two. <laughs> so that, you know, so it'll be sprinkled throughout, um, from now throughout the end of the fall, probably, um, just to give her, uh, Number one, a chance to change her mind maybe on some of these uh, tops especially. I think the bottoms she's pretty much solid on. Um, but to give her a chance to really explore what she likes and her style and um, also, you know, change her mind a little bit as we go along. So today is module one and I have um, a regular six piece module to share with you today. Um, yeah, so let's get started. All right, for piece number one, let me see if I can pull this out without making a gigantic mess. We'll start with the jacket. So she had, um, dropping things. So my daughter is an hourglass shape. Um, she is definitely, um, well, she's a 34, 26, 35. So very close to a, um, an hourglass, you know, pretty balanced figure. Uh, and she really enjoys things that hit at her natural waist or things that that show her waist not always she definitely wears like long tops and stuff over leggings because she's you know 13 almost 14 <laughs> but um for the most part she really does enjoy showing off that part of her body um you know accentuating it making that kind of the focal point which i totally get if that were my focal point i would be the same way so she really um wanted an idea of a jacket and even in her own words sorry my eye just got super dry um she it was less for warmth and function although a little bit for that and more for um, style so something you know their school gets cold we're also assuming that they're going to be in school at some point <laughs> i can't even joke about it um but their school does get chilly so having a little jacket to be able to wear within during school is always a big bonus i think my son wore a sweatshirt or a jacket every single day i think my partner is going to join us are you coming do i need to scoot over getting the side eye. Come on. Okay. 
I've made room. So needy, this one. Okay. <laughs> All right. So she definitely wanted um, a, kind of, she was saying it kind of like a windbreaker. Sorry, I'm also very cleavagey here today. Sorry about that. Um, she wanted something kind of a windbreaker type jacket, but she wanted it really oversized, um, like a bomber jacket that hit at her waist. Um, so that was kind of cropped. Um, but, you know, just to hit right at the natural waist or just right, have the band of the bomber really cinch in at her waist. But she wanted it really oversized in the body and in the arms. She, um, she likes to thrift with me and got a uh, sweatshirt that will be staying in her wardrobe as well. Um, but it's, it, that's what it, it's made like. It's a super wide sleeve and a super big body, um, like your standard sweatshirt, and you know, it's got the cuffs, nothing, it's a solid color, but it goes in right at her waist, and she loves that thing. Um, we thrifted it uh, during one of our hauls way, you know, gosh, probably January, maybe, <laughs> uh, February, actually, that might have been February, that may have been the last time that we've been thrifting, actually, um, sorry, in my eyeball. Okay, so, I was really nervous about being able to find, number one, um, you know, trying to find a, a pattern and also finding fabric for this idea of hers, but I hit gold, fabric gold. So when we were at Zinc's, and if you've seen that fabric haul, you've seen this, I found in the remnant bin, so I paid $1.50 a yard for this, I'm not sure actually how much I have, at least two yards, maybe three, but it's this beautiful um, kind of pale green, this is a really good color on her, this is kind of the color of her eyes, her eyes are just a little bit lighter than this. But it's a thin, lightweight, um, I would call it like a um, like a poly microfiber. It almost feels like men's swim trunk fabric. Or, like my husband has a pair of like the zip-off uh, hiking pants. Like it feels like that, like kind of thin. Um, but it's got kind of a brushed side on one side and then a little bit slicker on the other. But definitely I would call it like an outdoor um, utility fabric, I guess. Uh, you know, for outdoor hiking, that kind of thing. Um, I don't know how else to describe it. So, <laughs> it, yeah, but that's how I would describe this. Anyway, perfect for a bomber jacket. Also, the color is spot on for her as well. She loves green. Um, and this is about as dark as she can go up by her face because she's so fair. So I found this fabric for the jacket, and then I found this cotton, 100% cotton rib knit. Now obviously it's lighter, but if you could see up close, it actually, it's heathered. So there's like a whole bunch of different shades in here, and that darker shade is definitely in the, um, in the fabric. It's super soft. This is 100% cotton. It is a rib knit. It has a decent amount of, um, it actually has a really good amount of uh, recovery, especially for being 100% cotton. Um, usually you need some spandex in there to really get the good recovery, but this feels phenomenal. And I actually bought two yards of this. Um, God, I think, what did I pay? Two ninety nine a yard, three ninety nine a yard. But I really like them together. I think this is going to be great for the um, neckband, for the cuffs, and for the waistband. And I even got a zipper. Um, I think, what did I pay? Two dollars for this twenty inch zipper, which is crazy. Um, which I think will be plenty long because it is a cropped jacket. So those are the fabrics I'm gonna use. Now, when it came to um, patterns, I was uh, scouring the internet a little bit. Um, Sean from Kittenish Behavior has a, a similar build to my daughter, teeny tiny waist, and Sean likes to show her waist off as well. So I was kind of thinking, okay, what would Sean make? <laughs> to come up with like pattern ideas for my daughter. Um, there's that McCall's sweatshirt pattern um, I made for my daughter back in March and I got the idea from Sean because um, she's made it quite a few times. I can't remember the number. I'll pop a picture of the pattern up here. It, it discontinued now. But um, anyway, my daughter loved it. So Sean often talks about uh, Kamadia patterns or Kamadia, Kamad it's C or K-O-M-M-A-T-I-A, -I, I think. Um, so I'm like, I'm going to go check and see what they've got. Well, there's, they now have a new name. They're no longer, um, Kamadi, because I think it was Kamadi, I think that's how you pronounced it. Now they're Studio Calico. I'm going to say Calico. It is C-A-L-I-C-O-T. Um, it's a Canadian company, and typically when you have a T at the end of a word, especially with French, it is not pronounced. It is silent, so we're going to go Calico. I don't think it's Calicot. I think it is probably Calico, but maybe... <laughs> Anyway, I was searching on there and I found this bomber style jacket that was absolutely 
perfect for what she's wanting. It has a big bat wing sleeve, um, really big in the body, and then it sits in at the natural waist. So that is the pattern we bought. It's a PDF digital pattern. Well, I, I've already gone ahead and purchased it. Um, yeah, so that's what we're going to be making for her jacket. I was very excited on that find. Um, and actually, this is kind of the first time that, um, you know, a lot of times she'll ask for things, but then she just doesn't, like she hates when I bother her about it. <laughs> too much so she's, she's not as into the planning um but then she always like loves what i what i have at the end but for this is like the first time where she's actually showing an interest in wanting to help pick the patterns and uh really interested in seeing you know i, I made a pinterest board and i was pinning some outfits on things that we could kind of recreate and she was very excited about trying a lot of that so um i think this is going to be a very fun exercise for the two of us i'm really looking forward to it maybe more than her but that's okay um i also I'm an absolute mess. I grated my finger on the cheese grater the other day. Um, if you've ever done that, and that keeps opening back up. And then look, my wedding ring gave me, look at that awful rash. I have no idea. Obviously something got underneath my ring um, at some point, but I'm trying to let that heal. <laughs> it's like a rash ring. I'm a mess. Okay, for the pants. Now I'm basically making, uh, three different pant patterns for the, all of her clothing. Um, so you will see these will be basically the bottoms for everything. Um, I'm making, and she just wants, I think, as of right now, she just wants skinny jeans. Although I may be able to talk her into a flare pair. I think those would be really cute. I mean, I want her to be comfortable, not be out of her comfort zone. But um, for the first pair, she was interested in the ginger jeans by Closet Case Patterns. Um, she really likes the high-waisted uh, skinny one, which is what I would make for her. I got this wonderful stretch denim, and this has quite a bit of, um, it's a cotton spandex blend from um, the same fabric from Zinc's. Uh, $5.99 a yard I paid for this, but it has a lot of stretch. So that's going to be a very comfortable pair of ginger jeans. And this is the, I bought it in two colors. I can't remember now if this is the, I think this is the, I'm <laughs> looking in the light. One's like a dark, like an indigo, and then one's like an off black. This is the off black, I think. Um kind of hard to tell when they're not side by side. Uh, it's dark, but <laughs> I think, does that look off black to you? Yeah. It's not like true black. It's like an off black. Um, but I've got two yards of this, $5.99 a yard, and she's going to get a pair of ginger skinny jeans. I probably will have leftover fabric. Um, you know, she's not It'd be really cute if she'd let me do her a, a, a jean skirt or something. I don't know if that's going to be up her alley. Maybe for church, though. So we'll see what kind of um, leftover situation we have. But yes, she's going to get a pair of ginger jeans out of this denim. Hit my light. I still need to wash the denims. And then, this is a 100% cotton rigid denim. Rigid, so it doesn't have any stretch in it. It's just your typical regular denim in a mid blue. I mean, this is like blue. Um, and she wants, so I've been making her when all is said and done, two pairs of the ginger jeans and two pairs of the Megan Nielsen Dawn jeans. As of right now, um, she wants the skinny, um, Megan Nielsen Dawn. So the Megan Nielsen Dawn has three leg types and then a pair of shorts. I've made her the shorts a couple of times. She loves them. Um, so I, she wants a pair and I've also made her a straight legged pair of the Megan Nielsen Dawns. She's just outgrown them. Um, and she really enjoyed those as well, but she wants the skinny leg on this one. And she says right now that she, I have two pairs of, or two cuts of the more, the non-stretch rigid denim, um, that she wants skinny pairs out of both of those. We'll see. <laughs> or if I could talk her into something a little different, like maybe the straight leg pair or something. But, um, for this one, we're going with the mid blue and the Megan Nielsen Dawn, and I will do the skinny leg on this first pair. This is super wide fabric. I paid $5.99 a yard for this as well, and um, I mean, it's really wide. I haven't even measured, to be honest, but I got two yards of it, so I, I'm like, I could probably get myself a pair. I could probably get us each a pair of jeans out of this, to be honest. Or if she wanted a jean jacket. She has a jean jacket that I think still fits her, but um, she doesn't wear it that often, so I don't know, maybe it's not that big of a deal. Okay, for the tops. For the first top, I bought some double brush poly. This is the first time I have ever sewn well, or used double brush poly. Um, it's a polyester spandex blend. It is super soft. 
um, be, it's double brushed. <laughs> so it's brushed on both sides, making it very, very soft. I think it can be warm because it is polyester, but I know a lot, it comes in gorgeous, um, uh, prints, and I know that there's a ton of people that just live and die by it, making leggings and all sorts of stuff out of it. Uh, so I thought I'd give it a try with my daughter. This was the most expensive uh, cut of fabric, actually, that I got at Zinc's. It was $6.99 a yard, um, so it was $7. I bought a yard and a half, and I'm going to do the Closet Case Patterns Ebony cropped tee. So it's basically, um, the pattern picture doesn't show. Um, I've actually made it for myself once and lengthened the body a little bit, which I'll definitely have to do for her. She has a long torso, um, probably by like two inches, just so it's not too cropped. I'm getting like my hair and fuzzies in my lipstick and on my face. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, so I'll probably lengthen it by a couple of inches, but she does like that cropped. So it's kind of, a, it's a swing tee, basically. Um, but I think it'll be really cute over her, the high-waisted jeans and pants that she's wanting to wear. Holy moly. I have... So annoying. <laughs> anyway, they had a lot of, um, she didn't want any, she doesn't like a lot of print. Um, I bought a couple of things, but she she's okay with stripes. Um, they have a lot of really gorgeous florals in this double brush poly, but I went with this stripe and this beautiful coral color, which is amazing on her. We think she's a light spring. We've not had her colors done professionally, and I probably will at some point. Um, I just think that would be a good, like, life thing to know. She can go buy it or not, up to her. Um, but anyway, I thought I would do this t-shirt, and, um, I'll do the stripes horizontally. That's the stretch at this, yeah. The stripes go selvage to selvage. And you do need, it's fitted at the bust, so you do need, um, the stretch. So yeah, that's gonna be an ebony for her, um, with a long sleeve. I'll do a long sleeve on it, so I think that'll be perfect for the cooler months. That's been washed. And then, let's see, next we'll do this one. So this is a rayon chalet. Oh, that's true. All right, next we have um, this rayon chalet. Uh, this is, let's see, I paid $2.99 a yard for the rayon. I bought myself a piece of rayon and I bought her. I bought three yards of both of them just because I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it. This is a beautiful color on her. It picks up some of the greens that she wears really well. And then there's some black in there. Um, she was fine with this um, floral. I was like, she did not go fabric shopping with me, but I was FaceTiming her constantly. Okay, like, which one do you like? <laughs> and she picked this one. But what I'm going to do with this one is I am going to make her a Love Notions Rhapsody blouse. Uh, she liked that uh, kind of, um, oh, the 70s nod, you know, the real loose flowing top. I think she really wants to tuck this in to her jeans, um, although she could very easily wear it untucked as well. And I think we're gonna do the three quarter length uh, bishop sleeve that has the, um, the gathering at the arm. And I think that this should slide under that um, bat wing sleeve of the jacket very easily because it's such a roomy sleeve um, that we, she shouldn't have any problem with that. But yeah, so we're gonna do a Rhapsody. And then I think there's gonna be enough to do a dress for her for church. And I was kind of thinking, actually, of doing the Mimi G. Jessica dress. Um, and I know that that's a very strappy, summery dress, but I thought that this might be really nice um, to be kind of a multiple season dress. Um, I have another fabric that will be coming up later that um, in one of the other modules that actually I think we're going to split the fabric, but I thought a turtleneck. I'm going to think do a turtleneck for her, and I thought that that would be beautiful underneath this Jessica dress in the cooler months. So um, we'll see about that, but this will definitely be a Rhapsody blouse, um, and then we're going to see how much we have left for a dress for church for her. That still needs to be washed. Um, also, before, like I mentioned, this ribbing that's going to be for the jacket, I have two yards of this, so I think I may also do a turtleneck for her, um, the Megan Nielsen Rowan, because that's nice and fitted, and the turtle, the neck on it is very short. It's not a very high neck, which I think I think she would get annoyed with something too high, but just a little bit of a neck I think might be kind of fun for layering and then also just to wear with jeans. So um, I haven't talked to her about that yet, but we'll see. Um, she is at my parents right now, so I, I can't easily talk to her right now, but I think I may use the rest of this once I'm done with the cuffing for something like that. All right, and then finally, I have this beautiful spring green. This is 100% cotton knit. And it's pretty thin. I've washed it once. It softened up quite a bit. Um, and it's got, 
I mean, it's got fairly good recovery. But I think what we're going to do with this one is just do, I have four yards of this, and oh gosh, this was in the clearance, so $1.99 a yard. And um, I bought four yards because this is such a good color on her. So we can do quite a bit of things actually with this. So you may see this again popping up in um, future um, plans as well. But because it's not, I mean, it's stretchy. It's definitely t-shirt, but it's not like super, super stretchy. Um, I thought we would go with maybe a looser fitting um, t-shirt that she could wear over her jeans or, um, you know, kind of do a little half tuck if she wanted. So I think for the for the shirt for this one, I'm going to use the um, Rockford Raglan by Love Notions Patterns. That's, I haven't made that yet. And actually, I just bought it. It was the $5 um, pattern of the week last week. And I grabbed it because I thought it might be good for both of us, actually. Just a nice little slouchy tee. She actually has... Um, from last year, a couple of very similar t-shirts that we got from Gap that have just, they're just worn, they're just done, they're pilled, you know, I think they were a rayon uh, blend, and they're just, they're just done. They've been washed a million times. She had two of them, a solid one and one in stripes um, that she wore a lot over leggings, but um, yeah, I thought that this would be, a, a, that'd be a good pattern to recreate, and I thought doing this and that would be um, pretty nice as well. Again, I've got four yards of this. And I'm guessing I could probably, with strategic placement, um, I could probably get like four, four different tops out of this. So, um, you know, it may be something for me. I don't know. This is a little too springy for me. Well, maybe not. Maybe. I could probably pull that off. <laughs> so maybe something for me. We'll see. Um, anyway, so that is going to be just a, a plain t-shirty top. And I think I mentioned, um, you know, I bought quite a bit of cotton jerseys when I was at uh, Zinc's for her. Um, and I don't want to do just all, you know, your typical t-shirt. I think that gets a little boring. So we do, and she agrees that we want to spice it up a little bit and do um, a few different um, variations of t-shirt. You know, still a jersey top, but kind of mix it up so it's not just she's wearing jeans and a t-shirt every day. Um, just to make it a little, um, you know, still comfortable within the jersey, but something a little bit more stylish. So she's definitely open to that. So that could be very fun too. And I've actually, we've purchased a, f a few more of that Studio Calico patterns um, that are kind of, you know, hit at the natural waist, real oversized. She will have to wear uh, tank tops over a couple of them or under, over, under a couple of them. So that's the other thing. Um, I just made her a couple of Love Notion summer basic tanks um, to go with her uh, workout leggings that I made for her, which is gonna be the other pattern, the Helen's Closet Avery leggings. Uh, we'll talk about more about that when I actually um, get to those because I, I bought her some um, very neutral colors uh, for some athletic knit for the bottoms um, of those for everyday wear. But um, a lot of these knits, I'll have her pattern. I now have her pattern for the uh, basic tank sitting at my cutting table along with my pattern. So as I'm cutting out different knits, I can easily squeeze out a tank for her as well, especially because a lot of her um, styles that she's wanting to try, you know, maybe like an off the shoulder, but still have a tank top underneath that. Um, or even something that is more cropped, but have a tank top tucked in underneath it um, to give her more co coverage and modesty. So there, this definitely could also have a little bit of a... Um, a tank top that goes along with this as well. But yes, definitely the Rockford Raglan. And there we have it. I think that this is going to be a good start to her wardrobe. Um, this also breaks it up into chunks for me pretty easily as I'm going about sewing. Um, and then I can kind of slide in stuff for myself along the way. Um, not that I mind making things for her, but I let's be honest, at the heart of it, it's my hobby, it's my craft, and um, you know, I'm not gonna call it selfish sewing because it's not selfish sewing. You would never tell a painter who is painting a picture for her house that that was selfish painting. So I'm not gonna call it selfish. <laughs> but um, some, you know, definitely when inspiration strikes, I wanna leave a little wiggle room that I can definitely jump in and make myself um, a few things as I want to as well. So yeah, I think this will be a good chunk for um, the first little module that I'll be making for her. Um, and I'll be getting that sewn up here soon so that, um, you know, she's, got stuff to wear to school, although it's still going to be warm here until probably end of September. So she'll be wearing shorts and that kind of stuff to school anyway for a while. Um, but I would like to get the jacket made because it is cool in their school. So cool in their school. <laughs> so I know that they do like to be able to layer because um, the air conditioning can get pretty chilly in there, even in the hotter months. So that is it for today. 
Okay, on Friday, I'm going to be, um, I'm starting to reveal my active wear modules. I ended up not making everything that I had planned, well, mostly because I kind of, you know, it was like my eyes are bigger than my stomach type mentality when I was planning everything out. I think I'm pretty good now, um, or once I finish sewing up these last few things, I'm gonna be pretty good with my active wear drawer. And then the remaining fabrics that I had purchased, I put into my stash, and I think those are gonna become golf clothes. Um, we've started playing a lot more golf as a family here recently. I got new golf clubs. And so um, I'm gonna be doing a lot more um, golf outfit sewing and a lot of that is in athletic, athletic wear knits as well. So I've kind of pushed some of that off to the side and you'll be seeing that probably this fall when I'm making myself some golf clothes. So um, anyway, I've got the tops. Um, I'm gonna be sewing furiously <laughs> today and tomorrow. <laughs> Um, but you should be you should be seeing all of my active wear tops on Friday and then Tuesday we'll do the bottoms and then the following Friday we're going to do the jackets um, just so you can see everything that I've made with my active wear and then if you follow along uh, my weekly vlogs they go up on Wednesdays which is just a very casual me chatting at the camera um, you'll see a lot of the sewing of that of those items in the weekly vlogs they're usually a pretty long video because it's like a whole week's worth of me just popping in and talking to the camera um, very casual kind of showing you what I'm up to that kind of stuff um, and then on Sunday this week we start our B6674 sew along so um, I'm not sure how many weeks that's going to take to get through but I am lining fully lining the bodice of that pattern so um, if that's something that interests you, then uh, yeah, you'll definitely want to tune in starting on Sunday. And um, it'll be every Sunday until we finish that three or four weeks is that what my assumption is that what that so along is going to take. Um, we'll kind of see once we get into it. Okay, that's all I have for today. I hope you guys have a wonderful week and I will see you again uh, tomorrow for the weekly vlog and Friday for um, the beginning of my athletic wear reveal. <laughs> have a good week, guys. Bye-bye.